This video is about a probability paradox that has confused many people, including some with higher degrees in mathematics. Commonly called the two children problem, or Mr Smith's children, it was posed in the late 1950s by the mathematician Martin Gardner in the Scientific American magazine. Number nerds have been debating it ever since, but I hope here to show that it has a straightforward explanation that an average year seven student or sixth grader could understand. So what is the two children problem? Let's take a look. You have a colleague called Mr. Smith. The Smiths are an ideal nuclear family with two children. One of those children is a boy. What is the probability that the other child is a girl? We're assuming here that the Smiths had an equal probability of bearing a boy or girl on both occasions. I know that's not strictly speaking true, but this is a problem about mathematics, not biology or genetics. Anyone who knows the first thing about probability might assume that the answer is 50%. The fact that one of the Smith children is a boy doesn't alter the probability that the other is a girl. But that's to ignore the second thing about probability, that it's often not what it appears to be. That's why casinos make good business and bookmakers are rich. The two children problem is similar in essence to the Monty Hall problem, and if you're not familiar with that, there's a link in the description below. Both problems are counterintuitive and prove that what looks like a 50-50 chance is in fact a 2 to 1. And yes folks, Mr Smith is twice as likely to have a son and a daughter as he is to have two sons. The proof of this is straightforward. When a couple have two children, there are four possible outcomes. They could have a girl, followed by another girl, a boy, followed by another boy, a boy, followed by a girl, or a girl, followed by a boy. We know that one of the Smith children is a boy, so we can discount the two-girl possibility. So we're left with three equally probable outcomes, of which two boys is only one. Now, if we were to reframe the question as the Smiths have two children, the elder of whom is a boy, then we could discount the girl followed by boy possibility, and the chance of Mr Smith's other child being a girl is, of course, 50%. But if all we know is that one of the Smith children is a boy, then the chances are two to one in favour of the other being a girl. Well, that's all well and good. It may be counterintuitive, but put like that, I hope you can see why it's so. However, let's try putting it into practice, and this is where the paradox comes in. Your colleague, Mr Smith, has told you that he has two children, but you know nothing about their ages or gender. Then one day, you're in the park, and you meet Mr Smith with a boy, whom he introduces as his son. Does that mean that this boy is twice as likely to have a sister as he is to have a brother? Now, surely not. Well, no, it doesn't. In this case, your intuition is correct. There is now only a 50% probability that Mr Smith's other child is a girl. So what's going on here? Have we uncovered a flaw in mathematics? Oh, no, we haven't. This apparent paradox has a straightforward explanation. We'll come back to our encounter with Mr Smith in just a moment. But for now, let's reconsider the original assertion. If Mr Smith has two children, one of whom is a boy, then the chances are two to one that his other child is a girl. However, if Mr Smith has two children, one of whom is a boy named John, then the chances are only 50% that his other child is a girl. Huh? I hear you cry. What on earth has the kid's name got to do with the gender of his sibling? That's a fair question, but the answer really is simple. Once you make the distinction between the boys and the single two-boy possibility, then it divides into two possibilities. In the first scenario, Mr Smith having two boys is just one of three possible outcomes. If you name the boy, it adds the possibility of his having a younger or older brother. So the probability of his having a sister is now, as you'd expect, 50%. We can explain the anomaly of our meeting Mr Smith in the park in the same way. If we call the boy we met in the park Boy M, then the possibilities for Mr Smith's children are now that the boy we met has a younger brother, an older brother, 
a younger sister or an older sister, leaving the probability that the boy has a sister at 50-50. So there we go. The two children paradox isn't really a paradox. It's just a function of the information we have available. Simples. Well, kind of. I have oversimplified one thing. Let's go back to the possible family makeup, knowing that the Smiths have two children, one of whom is a boy. When we meet Mr Smith in the park with one of his children, what is the probability that the child will be a boy? If the Smiths have two boys, the probability is of course 100%. If the boy has a younger sister or an older sister, then the probability is only 50% because we could equally have met Mr Smith with his daughter instead. Reassuringly, the probability of meeting Mr Smith with his son if he has a daughter add up to the same as meeting his son if he has two boys, so the boy we meet has an equal chance of having a brother or a sister. But that's assuming that when we meet Mr Smith, there is an equal chance of his being with his son or his daughter if he has one. That's not necessarily the case. Say we lived in a sexist dictatorship which had a law stating that only boys were allowed out with their fathers and that girls had to stay home and help their mothers with the housework. Then, if we met Mr Smith with one of his children, it would be his son regardless of the gender of his other child. So Mr Smith's other child really would be twice as likely to be a girl than a boy. Of course, our sexist dictatorship is purely hypothetical. But suppose that Instead of meeting Mr Smith with his son in the park, we'd met them at a football match. I don't think it's outrageously stereotypical to suggest that boys are more likely to attend football matches than girls. So does this affect the probability of Mr Smith's other child being a girl? It seems so. For the sake of arguments, let's say that boys are 50% more likely to attend football matches than girls. That means that the chances of Mr Smith's having a son with him rather than his daughter, if he has one, are 75% compared to the 50% in the gender neutral environment of the park. So the Mr Smith we see at the football match is one and a half times more likely to have a daughter than the Smith, Mr Smith we saw in the park. Or is he? There are other considerations here, and I can think of at least one to suggest that his other child is more likely a girl. Anyone who's been patient enough to get this far into the video is welcome to comment on that below. One final thought occurs to me. What are we to conclude about the probability of Mr Smith's other child being a girl if we meet him picking up his son from an all-boys school? I'll leave you to work that one out for yourself. There is a Wikipedia article on this subject which I've linked in the description, but be warned, it's poorly written and unnecessarily confusing in my opinion. I hope this video has clarified it. If you've enjoyed it, feel free to like it. And if you'd like to subscribe to what must be one of the most random channels on YouTube, then I would, of course, be delighted. Bye for now.